Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom, and I am the events coordinator with Evidence Synthesis Ireland. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the, this is our last webinar of the year. So just a brief introduction about, uh, you might know much about uh, us, Evidence Synthesis Ireland, which includes Cochrane Ireland. We're uh, an all-Ireland initiative funded by the Health Research Board and the Research and Development Division of the Public Health Agency in Northern Ireland. And our aim is to build evidence into this knowledge, awareness and capacity on the island of Ireland. And we have a number of key activities for achieving that aim. And one of them is our monthly webinar on an evidence synthesis topic. So our presenter today is Dr. Heather Monta, uh, sorry, Heather, Heather Monta Coase. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> so Heather is a researcher at the Norwegian Institute of Public Health. And she is the co-founder of the Grade Circoil Approach and the Transfer Approach. She has been conducting systematic reviews of effectiveness and qualitative evidence synthesis for 10 years. Her research interests focus on using user-centered design approaches to develop methods and tools to improve the usefulness, relevance, and usability of systematic review findings and improve stakeholder representation in evidence-informed decision-making processes. Heather is online now, but before I hand over to her, to, to her, I'll just give you a bit of information on the background and webinar. So Heather will introduce the transfer approach for structured collaboration with stakeholders in order to consider context and the transferability of review findings. She will begin by discussing how collaboration with stakeholders can be beneficial when defining the review question and considering contextual factors, how transfer can help us to structure this collaboration, and how to assess the transferability of review findings to a local design making context. Transfer can be used with systematic reviews of effectiveness or qualitative research. So just before we start, we will have time for questions at the end. So we do encourage you to type your questions in the Q&A section at the bottom as we go along. And hopefully you should be able to upvote these questions as well. We'll make the recording of this presentation available on our website, and we do encourage you to sign into our newsletter as well. So that's it for me for now. I'll now hand over to Heather. So thanks very much, everyone. Hi, Thomas. Um, just one thing, I think um, it's frozen, is it? able, suddenly I'm not able to share my screen. Uh, I can see it. You can see it? Yeah. OK. But it's gone now again. OK. Try it once more. Huh. Yeah, there it is back oh, again. Okay. Can you see it? Uh, yes, I can. Perfect. Great. Great. Welcome, everybody. Um, thanks so much for attending today. Uh, as uh, Tom um, introduced me, uh, today I'll be talking about the transfer approach. Um, I'm not sure how many of you have heard of the transfer approach before. Uh, I assume because it hasn't been around for a long time that most people are, if familiar at all, not super familiar. Um, I hope some of you have maybe read the papers beforehand, but if not, I will list the references at the end of the talk. Uh, so the transfer approach is essentially structured collaboration uh, with stakeholders to consider context and transferability of review findings. Uh, so this project actually started about five years ago when my colleagues and I, who work really closely with um, commissioners of systematic review and decision makers in the Norwegian context, um, were getting a bit frustrated because we were receiving feedback uh, sometimes that the commissioners didn't feel the review totally answered the question they were interested in, or they found that perhaps some of the review findings, uh, or they suspected the review findings may not be applicable to their context, uh, that is the Norwegian context. Um, so upon looking into it more closely, I found there was very little, if any, guidance for people on how to consider uh, transferability. And specifically, I was thinking of the indirectness domain for GRADE. Uh, so of course, GRADE is, has very detailed instructions for um, all of the domains. Um, but for the indirectness domain in particular, it's a little bit more uh, difficult for review authors to understand how they should assess that domain. Uh, and I know personally, um, I'm willing to admit to it now, there were more than a couple of reviews where I got to the end of the review and was doing a great assessment, came to indirectness and thought, yeah, this is probably relevant <laughs> without actually having either the expertise related to the, the topic, um, which happens when you do commissioned systematic reviews, 
um, or access to the information necessary to make uh, an informed and uh, thoughtful consideration. Uh, and so up in all of this, uh, I thought within the systematic review process, we are so diligent and so systematic throughout. Uh, we have very transparent processes, um, but this one particular aspect when it came to how we engage with stakeholders and decision makers and how we consider transferability seemed to be a bit of a black box. Um, so uh, we embarked on a, um, a venture to understand how other people were doing it and if there was guidance available. Uh, so we did a systematic review and we found that there were a little bit, there were a few checklists. Um, but nothing that was meant for social care and health care. Um, only one other thing that kind of gave instructions from the beginning, but didn't really discuss about how to assess it at the end and um, communicate the assessment. Um, and nothing that had particularly looked at how to fit it in with a grade approach. And so this is not a grade tool per se, um, but we do believe and hope that it will support that assessment. Um, but the focus really of transfer then is to systematically and transparently collaborate with decision makers um, or stakeholders. Uh, and when I say stakeholders and decision makers, I mean anybody who has a stake in the review and perhaps would be considered an expert on the topic. So I'm going to start on my slides. And if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat box. Uh, and um, I will hopefully address most of your questions as we go. Um, I'll be building up information. So if I don't address it right away, just wait and see. Um, and then at the end, we'll have an uh, opportunity to discuss any questions that arise. So the transfer approach is guidance for review authors on how to improve collaboration with decision makers in order to systematically and transparently consider and assess the transferability of review findings to the review context. So transferability, uh, you can think of it as the same almost as relevance or indirectness, or there's a whole body of literature related to this terminology. But for the sake of this presentation and the transfer approach, we're talking about um, transferability factors, which are a subset of effect mod modifiers that are systematically present in a defined context and are hypothesized, that's a key word moving forward, to influence the transferability of review findings to the context. So when we make an assessment of transferability, uh, we're looking at whether there's a substantial difference between the context of the review question and the context of the studies contributing data to the review finding, uh, and specifically with respect to the a priori identified characteristics. Uh, so the context of the review question will often in a Cochrane review be global. Uh, you'll be looking at the effect of A on B without specifying any particular uh, setting. Uh, for commissioned reviews, as I do, you might have a global question and a specific context. So it would be the effect of A on B. Uh, and then a sub question would be, and how do these findings transfer to, for example, the Norwegian setting? So you all recognize this more or less as a typical systematic review process. We establish the need for a systematic review, either the review authors uh, come up with it themselves or it's commissioned. Um, the review authors will go and look into the topic a little bit if they aren't already content experts. Um, with transfer, uh, we then collaborate with the stakeholders to refine the review question. Uh, this is to ensure that we have a mutual understanding of the population, the intervention, the comparison, and the outcome. Uh, this, obviously, for all of you who have done reviews, uh, seems like a given. Uh, however, who hasn't got to the end of the review and realized that the commissioners were talking about children aged 6 to 21, and the review included children 0 to 18, for example. Uh, so a lot can be lost in translation if we're not very specific and detail-oriented. Um, and in the same meeting, uh, so this box right here, um, we're collaborating with stakeholders to refine the review questions. Oh, sorry. Um, identify and prioritize transfer factors, uh, and then define kind of the review context related to the transfer factors. And I'll get back to that after. Uh, and then we go back and we do a normal systematic review. The review team conducts a systematic review, defines the inclusion exclusion criteria, develops a search, um, uh, conducts the search, screens titles, full text, does methodological limitation assessment, 
extracts data and then synthesizes um, in an effectiveness review, a meta-analysis perhaps, or narrative review, uh, in a qualitative synthesis, um, doing some sort of um, content analysis or thematic analysis. Then what is also different using the transfer approach is we develop a transfer overview of included studies, which I will show you an example of later, but essentially just um, list the characteristics of the included studies according to the transfer factors you've already identified and assess the transferability of the uh, review finding, each review finding. Uh, ideally, uh, this could uh, support a grade or a grade circle assessment of certainty of the evidence. And then we can discuss the transferability of the review findings. So this is just um, to illustrate where we're working with uh, decision makers and where we're working with um, uh, alone as systematic review authors. So the purple are stakeholders and decision makers and the green are us as review authors. So as you can see, the decision makers and stakeholders aren't involved in the actual conduct of the review with the great, uh, transfer process. Um, they're involved at the beginning and potentially at the end when we discuss. So as I said, um, risk of bias is kind of an underlying tool that is intended to support uh, how we assess and communicate the grade component risk of bias. Uh, much like that, we see uh, transfer being an underlying table in order to assess and communicate the assessment of the indirectness component, component of grade or the grade circle com component relevance. So what does this look like in real life? Uh, it's a set of templates and guidance for review authors. So um, I have here the transfer conversation guide and guidance on how to use the conversation guide. But what actually happened when we were piloting the conversation guide was um, the, it, it showed up that we didn't always have a common understanding of the review question. And that's where we got into refining the review question first together. Uh, this isn't necessarily about transferability, but rather having clear and um, good communication. Uh, and I often use as an example that um, when you have different review teams coming into a review process, they're going to have their own agenda, background experiences, which will necessarily color how they conduct the review or make decisions, which is fine. Um, I often look at uh, how gender influences things. It's, um, it's just my background. Um, but not every review team would do that. So by having a template that we can use in order to refine the review question, we have at least all of the decisions that are made. Uh, first of all, they're done in uh, collaboration with decision makers uh, and their feedback, um, but also they're recorded for uh, posterity. So that if someone looks back and says, why did you include this particular population or uh, why did you cut off the intervention at this point, not include this group of interventions, then it's recorded and it doesn't seem kind of like a flippant uh, decision. So the main part of transfer, though, is the transfer conversation guide. And uh, for those of you who have read the paper, it probably looks a bit daunting. It's um, a little over a page uh, of prompts, essentially. And the reason why it's not daunting is because it's just that it's prompts. Uh, there's no way and no need for a review team to go through every single aspect of the conversation guide with uh, the stakeholders for each review question. Uh, and that's because beforehand, the review team can go through themselves and consider what is applicable to this particular review question. There might be some uh, prompts or topics for discussion in the conversation guide that are applicable to most review questions and others which are quite specific uh, to groups of interventions. So the conversation guide uh, looks something like this, and I apologize for the small text. Um, but so essentially with each prompt we're asking, would you be concerned if data comes from context where, uh, for example, the data was collected at a different point in time. So studies conducted before the year 2000, for example. Uh, another question you could ask decision makers could be, would you be concerned if data comes from contexts where the geographical, political, or economic context is different? Uh, so, for example, studies that come from post-conflict settings or where there's famine or high-income versus low-income settings. And, you know, essentially the whole point of this conversation guide, and I guess transfer as a whole, is to get past the idea that 
um, you know, those studies come from low income contexts, and therefore they're not applicable to the European, Northern European context. Or um, as I've heard in Norway, no, no, those studies from, are from America and we have very different practice here. Uh, so these, this is potentially true. There could be studies from an American context generally that are not as applicable to Norway. But what exactly about the American context makes uh, us pause uh, when we consider if these findings are relevant? Um, so let's get away from saying, uh, these studies are from America, or these are European, or these are low and middle income contexts, and get into the specific factors. So is it the time that we're concerned about? Is it uh, the political context or the economic context? Or as you go through the list, you can see, um, is the health and welfare system organized differently? But it encourages the review team and the decision makers to think a little bit more uh, concretely about what could influence transferability. And the reason why collaborate, uh, collaboration is so important here is because many of us uh, review authors are methodological experts, um, but probably have less uh, knowledge of a specific question uh, or a specific context. Um, and we need the expertise of stakeholders, decision makers, or other people who could be influenced by the review findings. So I think that the easiest way to consider transfer is to consider how it is in practice. So I have to excuse the um, nationalism here, uh, not even Norwegian actually, um, but alas, we're going to look at um, how a review and review findings could be uh, transferable to a Norwegian context. So we have a systematic review on the effect of housing programs on homelessness. And one of the findings is that housing programs lead to more days in stable housing compared to usual services. We deliver the systematic review and the decision makers say, yeah, but does this finding apply to our setting in Norway? Oh. So uh, let's say we had a time machine and we could go back and uh, consider the context before we conduct the systematic review. So decision makers can say, hey, we're wondering about housing programs for homeless people in Norway. And of course, the review authors, we can help you. So together, we go and we discuss uh, the review question. We discuss transferability factors. Uh, and we come up, maybe this meeting takes two to three hours in practice. Uh, we've piloted it a number of times now. And I think two to three hours is reasonable. Uh, just to put it out there, I know for some of you, that seems like a long time. Uh, and that you don't have that time. Also, it could be difficult to have uh, decision makers or other stakeholders involved in those two to three hours. Uh, we have done it now twice digitally via Zoom and Teams, and that's been quite successful. We've done it via email, not as successful. Um, and of course, in-person is preferable, but it's not necessary. Um, but the reason why in-person and even the digital um, platforms like Zoom and Teams are probably a little bit better than email is because some of the issues that come up, uh, come up because of dialogue. So uh, you can have a number of people who have different perspectives. Uh, I've had a review where I had an actual mentor, somebody who gave mentoring services, someone who organized mentoring services and a decision maker who was going to decide on funding and organization of mentoring for immigrants in Norway. Um, and you know those three individuals brought such different perspectives uh, that I could have spent three days trying to Google my way into understanding uh, the review question and the topic, um, but two hours gave me a much better idea and picture of what uh, I would be looking at in the review. So um, we can define the review question, and uh, that is using a template, uh, which I'll come to later, um, but let's look at discussing transferability factors. So. The question is, what factors could influence the transfer, transferability of the review findings to the Norwegian context? And again, we're talking about homelessness. So this is just a brainstorming session and it's based on the conversation guide. We go through the conversation guide, we go through the prompts that could be relevant and a discussion ensues. Uh, at the end, we spend about five to 10 minutes trying to prioritize. Um, and this is because with transfer, we follow the good practice outlined by Sun and colleagues on subgroup analysis. Um, in order to identify uh, about three to five transfer factors. Um, and that's because the transfer factors end up being essentially um, a subgroup analysis 
uh, topics. Um, so more than that, and it gets overwhelming and it kind of seems like data mining. Um, so it seems like a good number. So in this example, uh, we come to climate, length of homelessness and usual services. So uh, the weather simply could influence how successful or not a homeless program is. Uh, the length of homelessness, if people have been homeless for a long time, they're probably less likely to respond to a homelessness program. Um, and the usual services in Norway, I'm not sure about Ireland, but in Norway, we are lucky enough to have very good usual services. So any additional intervention um, might have less of an impact hypothetically than in a country or a setting, um, a local setting that has less comprehensive usual service um, offers. So the review team then goes and conducts the review. And um, when they're extracting data, they pay also attention to climate, length of homelessness, and usual services. And I can say that this example is based, um, it's fictionalized, of course, but it's based in the bottom on uh, my experience conducting a review on homelessness, where I was simultaneously developing the ideas related to transfer. Um, but so I, I had got the conversation guide, um, kind of a beta version ready uh, near the end of when I was finishing this review. And so I thought I'll bring it to the decision makers who I've been in contact with, and we can go through it afterwards and see if this could have been helpful. And so um, I did, we had a couple of hours together and these three uh, factors actually came out of that discussion uh, and they weren't included in the review. And at that point I had no chance of going back to all the 42 included studies um, and extracting data related to the climate of the study context or how long the participants had been homeless at baseline or the quality or comprehensiveness of usual services. But I understood afterwards that that could have influenced um, how transferable the findings were to the Norwegian context. So the review team then extracts data related to the transfer factors. And then when we get to the review findings after our synthesis, we do subgroup analysis simply. And as I mentioned, the word hypothesis is super important here because transfer is not about finding how different everything could be, but rather testing hypotheses. Uh, in some cases, we're gonna find that uh, a decision maker or a practitioner or stakeholders idea of whether something will or will not work in their context is a myth. It's just based on a myth. Um, so we're testing these hypotheses, these hypothesized factors using subgroup analysis where possible. So if the review finding is that housing programs lead to more days in stable housing compared to usual services, then we look at the first transferability factor uh, and that is length of homelessness. Uh, we are so lucky in this fictionalized example uh, to have enough studies and enough data to do a subgroup analysis. And we find that there is a small uh, but significant difference uh, in the effect size between uh, studies where the participants were uh, homeless for longer periods of time versus shorter periods of time at the baseline. So in this case, uh, we make our transferability um, overview and uh, under the length of homelessness um, uh, transferability factor, we say that we have minor concerns. Uh, it may have less, a slightly less effect in settings where uh, homeless people have been homeless for longer periods of time. We then go on to the second transfer factor. And in this case, it's quality and comprehensiveness of usual services. So again, so lucky we have lots of data. We do a subgroup analysis and find out that there is a small but sub, uh, significant uh, effect size difference uh, between contexts where there is a high quality, which we have predefined, versus low quality usual services. Um, and again, we can see that it's the same direction of effect, but we're just talking a small but si statistically significant difference. So we go back to our table and we put in, again, minor concerns between the two contexts. Finally, we see that uh, we look at climate as a transferability factor. And we see that all of the studies come from climates that have um, similar temperatures or seasons to Norway, uh, which is <laughs> just cold. <laughs> uh, so in this case, we have no concerns about the transferability. They all seem to come from the same uh, setting, more or less. 
So we then have a summary of our transferability findings. Uh, we have minor concerns for length of homelessness, minor concerns regarding quality of usual services, and no concerns regarding climate. Using this information, we come up with a transfer overview. Uh, so if the review finding is that housing programs lead to more days and stable housing compared to usual services, we then have our transfer factors listed here. Uh, we have our concerns for each one listed here. Uh, you can see here that I came up with an overall uh, assessment of moderate concerns. This probably could have also been minor concerns. Um, that is something that the review team will have to consider and then um, explain in the assessment. Uh, we then have an expl explanation for each transferability factor um, assessment um, and overall assessment. And we include um, what studies were supporting uh, or contributed data to that particular review finding. So the overall assessment is moderate concerns. In this case, there are minor differences between the included studies and the review context with respect to length of homelessness and quality of usual services. However, uh, the data contributing to the review finding comes from cold climate settings. Um, we don't have any evidence available uh, how the intervention may work in warm settings, which is not uh, important for the Norwegian context. So using this, uh, we propose to uh, then support the grade or the grade circle assessments. So for a grade, uh, the indirectness. Indirectness looks at differences in a population, differences in the intervention, differences in the outcome measures, and indirect comparisons, which is not really relevant for transfer. Transfer can't really help there um, off the top of my head, but it could. Perhaps we could look into that further down the road. Um, for grade circle, uh, we're looking at direct, indirect, or partial relevance. Um, this is for qualitative evidence synthesis, and so we're not going to go really into depth on this particular slide, um, but if anyone has questions about using transfer and a qualitative synthesis, please let me know at the end and I can give you some good examples of where we've piloted it so far. So for example, in this case, uh, we could say that uh, we have, let's assume everything else about these studies is fantastic. Uh, we could say though that we have serious uh, concerns. Uh, there's minor concerns regarding differences between studies and review context with respect to length of homelessness and quality of usual services, and no concerns regarding differences between studies and review context related to climate. So I don't know about you, but this is a much more detailed assessment of indirectness than I have previously used before using transfer, and it's more detailed and thoughtful and considerate um, than those I have seen in many other systematic reviews. So as I said before, this was to a local context. We've defined Norway as the context of interest for this review question. However, as most of you know, um, most of the data will have come from around the world. So we could technically also make an assessment for the global context using all the same information. And that would depend on what the findings were being used for. Um, but for example, if we were then going to make an assessment of transferability to the global context, it might look different. Uh, in this case, we would actually probably not have concerns about the length of homelessness because uh, a variety of uh, the studies represented um, less than one month to more than four years of homelessness. So it was a wide variety of participants involved. Um, we probably wouldn't be concerned about the quality of usual services because the studies represented a range of usual services. Um, however, we might actually be concerned about climate when it comes to the global perspective, and that is simply because we don't know how the intervention may work in warmer settings. So if you are from Mali or South Africa and you're reading the review and you're wondering, should I in, use these review findings in my setting, we have had a little red flag here that says we simply don't know if it'll have the same effect in your setting as it does in settings that are cold. So. Um, as I said, even though this was commissioned for uh, Norway, uh, people in other settings can use it. And so this also comes up as a question often. Of course, we haven't been able to use uh, representatives from every country around the world to give their considerations about transferability. Um, however, 
It's our hope that in most review processes, the people involved in it are content expert enough to understand um, the, the uh, transferability issues and that these could also apply to other settings. And if not, then at least people who are reading the review from another context have an idea of why the indirectness assessment was made and where there are red flags. Uh, so somebody reading this in Canada might say, okay, well, this is great, this applies to our setting, or it doesn't, but they have uh, some explanation for the transferability assessment. So uh, in practice, the review team can present uh, the review findings and say the review findings may be transferable to your setting, but the effect size may be less than the estimated effect size in the review finding. So these are the two papers that we have published um, related to transfer. Um, please read them if you want more details. Um, they are available on open access um, and I think also on ResearchGate. Or if you can't find them, you can send me an email and I'm happy to send them to you. Uh, and if you would like more information or you want to use the transfer approach and would like some guidance, uh, please contact me uh, either at my work or private email and I'm happy to help you. Um, and I think now I will open it up for questions.